how would you get started with this? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I have a picture of something. I already drew a still life. Um, so I'm going to just choose File and Place. And I made this scan and I imported it. And I'm going to do a couple of things here. First of all, um, I'm going to turn off Link and turn on Template. What linking does is it maintains a link to the original file. So if you update the file, um, the, the graphic inside Illustrator updates as well, which is really cool um, if, if you think that you're going to be changing the file a lot. So for example, if you're working in a brochure or something and, and you're putting in photographs, those photographs might get updated later. So linking to them is great. also keeps the Illustrator file size down because that graphic is still outside of the folder. The problem with linking is that uh, you have to maintain those outside files. You can't throw that file away. If you do, Illustrator will lose it. Um, so I'm, in this case, I'm just placing this for template purposes to trace over. So I'm going to turn off link so it gets embedded into the document. So now if this were a 10 megabyte file, my Illustrator file would grow by 10 megabytes. Also turned on template, and you'll see here in a second what template does. So I'm just going to choose place. So again, just file place. And I get this tinted back um, object of the scan that I made. And you can kind of see it came right out of my sketchbook. And over in the layers palette, notice that it's, uh, it shows this new layer. And template layers always are in italics. And we'll be working with template layers quite a bit here. But uh, the, the cool thing about it is notice that it's locked down. It's in italics. If I double click on it, um, with template being checked, a couple of things happen. It automatically locks it and it dims the image back. So one thing that will happen when you're working with templates is you might forget that you're working with a template. And then when you um, print the thing and you want to print it without a template image, um, or I'm sorry, with the template actually included, so we turn off template, it actually gets quite a bit darker. Notice here's the difference with template turned off. So it's quite a bit darker. Um, but for this, I'm just going to use template as a tracing image. So that's why it dims the image back. Um, and notice it won't print. With a template, you don't have printability. So that's kind of nice. Uh, so this is just purely for tracing. It also locks things down. But if you wanted to move this around or scale it, you could. I'm going to assume that you're going to watch all of the other movies associated with this exercise. So I'm not going to get into all the panels and all of that stuff. It's for another one. I just kind of wanted to get into what we might do here. So let's zoom in a little bit. And first thing I'm going to do is I, I can't draw on this layer. If I get out a pencil or something, notice the pencil has a slash through it, meaning that this is a non-writable layer. That's just because I'm on this template layer with the lock. If I click back on layer one, the pencil becomes active. Um, now with pencil by default, it has um, a black, well actually it should be a black stroke and no fill. Remember, no fill or stroke is denoted by a red slash. Again, you'll see that in other movies. Um, so what I might do here is just kind of rough in get this guy kind of put in here. And as I'm putting in the line work, you might notice that it's kind of blanking out here. And it can be a kind of a strange environment. So if I turn this off, notice those, those are the lines coming in. So right now my lines are all pretty small and, and skinny. Um, so I would suggest just starting off by kind of tracing these in. I might dim this back even a little bit more. So instead of 50, why don't I dim it back to, I don't know, let's try 20 and see what it looks like. Okay, now I can kind of see where my lines are a little better too. And need to click back on the drawing layer. All right. So I would just kind of go in the process of drawing this out. Now you might notice that 
when I'm working with the pencil, if I get close to an existing line, the little X next to the pencil goes away. That means that it's going to modify the existing stroke. So if I come in here and go like that, notice it changes the stroke. Um, if I want to make a new stroke, I need to either start drawing that thing sufficiently for far enough away, or I can just double click on pencil. Let's bring that up. And I'm going to just to turn off Edit Selected Paths. Okay, so now I can get as close as I want, and it's not going to modify the existing paths. So I'm just going to come in here. Now, if you've used Illustrator before, you know that there's this concept of kind of construction paper, um, which I'm ignoring for this first exercise. I'm just kind of wanting to get used to the environment. So what does a pencil do? What, what kind of behavior do I get from that? Um, down the road, we're going to definitely be getting into um, different tools. So, for example, instead of a pencil, I might get out the pen if I wanted to be more precise. Um, the pen, I can lay down very precise curves and make something much more mechanical in nature. And this is obviously useful for doing uh, work like logo design. Um, but for just getting a sketch down, I don't know, it might be overkill. Um, notice I can drag out these handles. These are called Bezier handles and build out um, my lines that way. I could also use the paintbrush. Paintbrush is kind of like the pen or I'm sorry, not the pen, kind of more like the pencil. Notice that it's by default it's drawing with a calligraphy brush. So my lines here are a little bit thicker and I can make some modifications um, to that as well. Now what's neat about Illustrator is it's all not set in stone. I can change these fills and strokes as I go. So don't get too caught up in, oh this, you know, I'm not being consistent. Um, what I really need to do is just kind of get the thing in here. So, first of all, why don't I just press Command A. That'll select all the paths I've drawn so far. And I'll apply the same brush stroke so we can kind of use the same stroke in all these cases. Um, so let's see, let's apply one of these strokes. That's awfully thick. Um, okay, that's, that's a good one for now. Um, and this lets me see what I'm doing a little bit better than the pencil was doing as well. Now, just keep drawing this guy out. By the way, I'm using a Wacom tablet, or Wacom, I, I never know how to pronounce that, um, which is basically just a little stylus. Um, and so instead of having a mouse that I'm dragging around, I have a little pen in my hand, and I'm running across a tablet surface. If you ever want to try one of these out, if you haven't used them before, um, we have them in the department. You can come in and work in the department and give them a shot. And you'll notice when I'm using the pen tool, um, my initial line is kind of rough. And when I finish it, it smooths out. Part of that has to do with smoothing on the, on the tool itself. There's a fidelity setting of two pixels. So it's going to get within two pixels as I draw. Um, but then it'll smooth it, and you can fiddle around with these guys if if uh, if you want to. And again, notice there's edit selected paths here too. But what I'm really doing is just kind of getting this figure drawn in. Okay. Now, with Illustrator, when you're working with with a figure like this. Um, you might notice that coloring it, actually putting in a fill, is going to be tedious. Um, and that's because I have all these loose lines in here, all of these kind of disconnected lines. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just add some here as I'm working. Looks like there's kind of a little ball joint or something up here. And again, we could come in and make this more mechanical, but I'm just kind of trying to rough this in. So right now I have kind of this, this loose, open drawing. How do I apply color to this? If I want to add a color, if I press Command-A, 
and I give this a fill, just double click on this, let's color it something like, I don't know, some kind of yellow. And it, it does this really weird thing. What Illustrator is doing here is it fills open paths. These are all considered open paths. And it fills them by connecting the opening point and the closing point and it just draws a straight line in between. So again, here's here's a path and it has an opening point and a closing point. And if I apply a color, it's going to fill in between those two, which isn't necessarily what I want. What I kind of would like to see happen here is I want to be able to fill in the interiors um, and, and maybe leave this other stuff alone. So that's there's a couple ways I could go about this and, and again if you watch the videos you'll notice that there, you can join lines together. Um, also let's see if the paint tool has the same trick as the um, as the pencil tool. As I'm drawing with the paintbrush I'm gonna hold down option and when I let go notice it closed that up. So option or alt on the PC notice as I'm holding down option see how I get the little circle that means it's going to close that path. So now I have, I'm making closed paths and obviously as I apply color there it makes more sense. So you could make closed paths and you could also do that obviously if you're using a closed path tool like, a, like the ellipse tool. Um, or we could use something like live paint and fill it in. So what I'll do here is I'll zoom out a little bit Actually, what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer first of all, so we can fiddle around with this a bit. So I just drag this layer down and put it on the new layer button. When I do that, it makes a new copy. Now I'll just hide one of those. So we can fiddle around with live paint on one, and we'll just use some other techniques on the other. Okay, so with this guy, I'm going to select all again. I'm going to get rid of the fill. I'm going to go under the object menu, down to live paint, just choose make. Ah, and it tells me that I'm going to lose brushes and that kind of stuff if I do this, if I convert to live paint. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and do it. You notice it just gets kind of these straight strokes to it. Um, now, when you have a live paint group, if I click on it, notice the whole thing selects here. And if I zoom in, I'm going to come in and get out my live paint bucket. And I'm having trouble remembering where it's at. Yep, it's under the Shape Builder tool. So there's my live paint bucket. And as I hover around areas, you'll notice that Illustrator has kind of discovered intersections. It looks for where lines overlap, and it creates these intersections, which I can then fill with color. But you'll notice it's not working for all of these. Um, some of these have open paths and the paths are so open that Illustrator doesn't know how to close them up. So we'll close those in just a second. Um, so yeah, yeah so I, as I'm kind of cruising around in here, notice I can pick some of these and others I can't. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a color. It's uh, kind of an orange color here. And you can see, then you just click to drop in your colors. So I'm going to just drop in a couple of colors, and then we'll come back here to the ones that aren't filled. Let's see about this. There we go. There, so we're getting a good number of them filling, and some of them not. All right. So what do you do about some of these that don't? Well, you can go under Object and choose Live Paint and choose Gap Options. And if you do Gap Options, it'll show you detection. It looks for small gaps and it'll go in and close up small gaps. And that's why some of this is closing up right now. I can always choose something like Large Gaps and then you can see it's coming in and it's actually closing up the head in places. 
So that's one way of going about it. You can even choose custom and put in gaps. So one thing you can do is just kind of look and see if this will do it for you. Um, and it seems to you know, be doing an okay job. So I'm going to say okay here and come back in and fill this a little bit more. But notice this isn't filling. This is filling up now. But this isn't filling either. So there's still some parts that aren't working. And I think this is too open. And obviously down here, some of these aren't going to work either until I take care of it. Um, so what do you do about an opening like this? You get out your pencil tool. I'm going to click away so there's nothing. And I'm going to just draw a pencil line across the shape. And I'm going to give it a fill and a stroke of nothing. All I want it to do is act as a closing object. So I've got that selected. Get out my arrow tool, hold down shift, click back on the overall object, come down into object, live paint, I'm going to merge. When I do that, I can get out my live paint bucket again. I'm just going to hold down option or alt so I can sample that color. And now notice I can close up because it sees that, that intersection and I'm able to close that guy up. So I could go around and, and uh, close this whole thing up and, and kind of finish my live paint object that way. And I can change colors too, so you, do, you wouldn't have to live with this. So for instance, um, I might color some of the front areas here just so that it had a little bit more shade to it. Um, I don't know if I like that or not, but you can kind of see the idea behind Live Paint. Live Paint looks for intersections. It's really handy for doing little illustration work like this. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do is kind of what was done in the old days. I'm going to go back to my original shape here, or my set. Select it, Command A, and give it no fill. And that's funny, it should have given I'll fill to those guys. Zoom out. Sorry, I'm sitting here kind of puzzled about this. I've done a command A and I applied no fill. And it's still showing as being filled. So I wonder what I'm doing wrong. I um, wonder if, is this a live paint group? No. Some of that stuff. It's very odd. It's showing up like it's filled here, even though it's not. So, what I want to do, let's, let's select all the items in the layer this way. Aha! Here's the problem. <laughs> Dummy me. I was still using the live paint tool. I had the live paint bucket and it was saying, no, oh, you don't want to give a fill to a live paint bucket. I hadn't gotten rid of this because this layer isn't using live paint. So when I selected the arrow, notice it showed me a fill of yellow. That's the problem. It was user error. So I'm going to give this side no fill. And in this case, I'm going to do kind of a, a different approach. So I'm going to make a layer right below it. There's a new layer. I'm going to drag it down below. I'm going to lock the layer that we see the lines on. And I'm going to just come through in this layer below and I'm going to start coloring that layer. So I'm going to pick out areas that I want to color. So for instance, maybe I want the hand, the interior of the hand. And I'll go ahead and give this a color and no fill. 
and I can do this on a number of these guys. Oops. Just do fills, no, no color here. So I come in and get a couple of these guys done. And you'll notice it's just kind of remembering the last color that was used. And since I'm drawing underneath the ink, it's basically just adding a layer of, of fills. There's my fills. So I could come in and put down some shadows if I want, um, what have you, go through. And what's kind of neat about this is I, I can even extend this. It doesn't have to follow the lines at all. It can be bigger than the lines, smaller than the lines. It has nothing to do with the lines I've drawn. kind of like this method and I used it when I made a comic book earlier this this year. I like this method for for being able to color because it's kind of free form. Um, obviously the drag is that I'm drawing all the shapes twice ostensibly. Um, and you know some people see that as being kind of extra work. Um, I don't know. I, there's, I'm sure that there's good and bad, but when I think about doing this conventionally, getting out a pen and doing an ink wash on this, instead of what I'm doing now, this is a lot easier than that. So I don't know. I suppose um, there's pros and cons to this kind of approach. Um, but I kind of like this quality, the way that the color um, is separate from the lines that are going on. So you could come through and, and you know, put together your design this way. Maybe I'll come in and adjust this color a little bit. So now I'm doing the highlight side of things. And put this behind this other guy. Maybe I want those highlights to be a little brighter. But you can kind of see the point. So when I'm talking about you building a still life here, this is really what I'm talking about. Thinking about how to get form into Illustrator, how to get comfortable with it as a tool. Um, one thing that I did was to just get it out of the equation in terms of drawing. I made the drawing elsewhere and brought that in to Illustrator so that all I'm really working on in Illustrator is um, the production. I'm not worrying about the artistry in Illustrator. That's already been taken care of. I made the composition somewhere else and I'm just building it out inside of here. So um, that's that's one reason why to think about you know doing something that way is that it, it does make your life a little easier you're not trying to think about being creative and how to use the tool um, as you get better with Illustrator you'll probably do that you'll probably just start working in it directly but you can kinda get the drift of, of where I'm going with this um, if, if I were really concentrating rather than talking so much here what I'd probably do is pick a mid-tone color and fill the whole area with a mid-tone color. You know, build the whole thing out with mid-tone. And then I come in and draw individual shapes for shadows and individual shapes for highlights, just like you would if you were painting. And if I wanted to build it out more, maybe do quad tones, um, or I'm sorry, quarter tones and three quarter tones. Uh, that would be one way you could go. Again, if we look in the layer palette, I have just one for the fills and one for the strokes. They kind of work together this way. So think it over. Um, there's multiple ways that you can go about this exercise. What I really want you to do is just think about um, using Illustrator as an expressive tool for this. Um, get something drawn out, bring it into Illustrator, and you can either scan it in or you can draw it directly in Illustrator, and then sketch it out. Don't don't worry about being too mechanical. If you want to be mechanical about it, make something really tight, that's that's great. But explore this idea of, of working with 
um, fills and strokes that aren't necessarily um, you know right next to each other that they can they can be a little loose they can um, have a, a different interaction um, and also this this idea of a template layer template layers will make your life so much easier I've, I've done so many drawings where I start with a drawing bring it into Illustrator and then start building on that so uh, please let me know if you have questions and otherwise uh, have fun with this